Reality Maintainer presents How Successful People Think. Chapter 5 Utilize Strategic Thinking. Most people spend more time planning their summer vacation than planning their lives. Source Unknown. When you hear the words strategic thinking, what comes to mind? Do visions of business plans dance in your head? Do you conjure up marketing plans, the kind that can turn a company around? Perhaps you contemplate global politics, or you recall some of history's greatest military campaigns. Hannibal crossing the Alps to surprise the Roman army, Charlemagne's conquest of Western Europe, or the Allies' D-Day invasion of Normandy. Perhaps, but strategy doesn't have to be restricted to military action, or even to business. Strategic thinking can make a positive impact on any area of life. Plan your life, live your plan. I've observed that most people try to plan their lives one day at a time. They wake up, make up their to-do list, and dive into action. Although some people aren't even that strategic. Fewer individuals plan their lives one week at a time. They review their calendar for the week check their appointments, review their goals, and then get to work. They generally outachieve most of their daily planning colleagues. I try to take planning one step further. At the beginning of every month, I spend half a day working on my calendar for the next 40 days. 40 days works for me rather than just 30. That way, I get a jump on the next month and don't get surprised. I begin by reviewing my travel schedule and planning activities with my family. Then I review what projects, lessons, and other objectives I want to accomplish during those five to six weeks. Then I start blocking out days and times for thinking, writing, working, meeting with people, etc. I set times to do fun things, such as seeing a show, watching a ball game, or playing golf. I also set aside small blocks of time to compensate for the unexpected. By the time I'm done, I can tell you nearly everything I'll be doing almost hour by hour during the coming weeks. This strategy is one of the reasons I have been able to accomplish much. Why you should release the power of strategic thinking. Strategic thinking helps me to plan, to become more efficient, to maximize my strengths, and to find the most direct path toward achieving any objective. The benefits of strategic thinking are numerous. Here are a few of the reasons you should adopt it as one of your thinking tools. 1. Strategic thinking simplifies the difficult. Strategic thinking is really nothing more than planning on steroids. Spanish novelist Miguel de Cervantes said, the man who is prepared has his battle half fought. Strategic thinking takes complex issues and long-term objectives, which can be very difficult to address, and breaks them down into manageable sizes. Anything becomes simpler when it has a plan. Strategic thinking can also help you simplify the management of everyday life. I do that by using systems, which are nothing more than good strategies repeated. I am well known among pastors and other speakers for my filing system. Writing a lesson or speech can be difficult, but because I use my system to file quotes, stories and articles, when I need something to flesh out or illustrate a point, I simply go to one of my 1200 files and find a good piece of material that works. Just about any difficult task can be made simpler with strategic thinking. Two. Strategic thinking prompts you to ask the right questions. Do you want to break down complex or difficult issues? Then ask questions. Strategic thinking forces you through this process. Take a look at the following questions developed by my friend Bob Beale, the author of Master Planning. Direction. What should we do next? Why? Organization. Who is responsible for what? 
Who is responsible for whom? Do we have the right people in the right places? Cash. What is our projected income, expense, net? Can we afford it? How can we afford it? Tracking. Are we on target? Overall evaluation. Are we achieving the quality we expect and demand of ourselves? Refinement. How can we be more effective and more efficient, move toward the ideal? These may not be the only questions you need to ask to begin formulating a strategic plan, but they are certainly a good start. 3. Strategic thinking prompts customization. General George S. Patton observed, Successful generals make plans to fit circumstances, but do not try to create circumstances to fit plans. All good strategic thinkers are precise in their thinking. They try to match the strategy to the problem, because strategy isn't a one-size-fits-all proposition. Sloppy or generalized thinking is an enemy of achievement. The intention to customize in strategic thinking forces a person to go beyond vague ideas and engage in specific ways to go after a task or problem. It sharpens the mind. 4. Strategic thinking prepares you today for an uncertain tomorrow. Strategic thinking is the bridge that links where you are to where you want to be. It gives direction and credibility today and increases your potential for success tomorrow. It is, as Mary Webb suggests, like saddling your dreams before you ride them. 5. Strategic thinking reduces the margin of error. Anytime you shoot from the hip or go into a totally reactive mode, you increase your margin for error. It's like a golfer stepping up to a golf ball and hitting it before lining up the shot. Misaligning a shot by just a few degrees can send the ball a hundred yards off target. Strategic thinking, however, greatly reduces that margin for error. It lines up your actions with your objectives, just as lining up a shot in golf helps you to put the ball closer to the pin. The better aligned you are with your target, the better the odds that you will be going in the right direction. Six. Strategic thinking gives you influence with others. One executive confided in another. Our company has a short-range plan and a long-range plan. Our short-range plan is to stay afloat long enough to make it to our long-range plan. That's hardly a strategy. Yet that's the position where some business leaders put themselves. There's more than one problem with neglecting strategic thinking in that way. Not only does it fail to build the business, but it also loses the respect of everyone involved with the business. The one with the plan is the one with the power. It doesn't matter in what kind of activity you're involved. Employees want to follow the business leader with a good business plan. Volunteers want to join the pastor with a good ministry plan. Children want to be with the adult who has the well thought out vacation plan. If you practice strategic thinking, others will listen to you, and they will want to follow you. If you possess a position of leadership in an organization, strategic thinking is essential. How to release the power of strategic thinking. To become a better strategic thinker, able to formulate and implement plans that will achieve the desired objective, take the following guidelines to heart. 1. Break down the issue. The first step in strategic thinking is to break down an issue into smaller, more manageable parts so that you can focus on them more effectively. How you do it is not as important as just doing it. You might break an issue down by function. That's what automotive innovator Henry Ford did when he created the assembly line. And that's why he said, Nothing is particularly hard if you divide it into small jobs. How you break down an issue is up to you, whether it's by function, timetable, responsibility, purpose, 
or some other method. The point is that you need to break it down. Only one person in a million can juggle the whole thing in his head and think strategically to create solid, viable plans. Two, ask why before how. When most people begin using strategic thinking to solve a problem or plan a way to meet an objective, they often make the mistake of jumping the gun and trying immediately to figure out how to accomplish it. Instead of asking how, they should first ask why. If you jump right into problem solving mode, how are you going to know all the issues? Eugene G. Grace says, thousands of engineers can design bridges, calculate strains and stresses, and draw up specifications for machines. But the great engineer is the man who can tell whether the bridge or the machine should be built at all, where it should be built, and when. Asking why helps you to think about all the reasons for decisions. It helps you to open your mind to possibilities and opportunities. The size of an opportunity often determines the level of resources and effort that you must invest. Big opportunities allow for big decisions. If you jump to how too quickly, you might miss that. Three, identify the real issues and objectives. William Feather, author of The Business of Life, said, before it can be solved, a problem must be clearly defined. Too many people rush to solutions, and as a result, they end up solving the wrong problem. To avoid that, ask probing questions to expose the real issues. Challenge all of your assumptions. Collect information even after you think you've identified the issue. You may still have to act with incomplete data, but you don't want to jump to a conclusion before you gather enough information to begin identifying the real issue. Begin by asking, what else could be the real issue? You should also remove any personal agenda. More than almost anything else, that can cloud your judgment. Discovering your real situation and objectives is a major part of the battle. Once the real issues are identified, the solutions are often simple. Four, review your resources. I already mentioned how important it is to be aware of your resources, but it bears repeating. A strategy that doesn't take into account resources is doomed to failure. Take an inventory. How much time do you have? How much money? What kinds of materials, supplies, or inventory do you have? What are your other assets? What liabilities or obligations will come into play? Which people on the team can make an impact? You know your own organization and profession. Figure out what resources you have at your disposal. Five, develop your plan. How you approach the planning process depends greatly on your profession and the size of the challenge that you're planning to tackle. So it's difficult to recommend many specifics. However, no matter how you go about planning, take this advice. Start with the obvious. When you tackle an issue or plan that way, it brings unity and consensus to the team because everyone sees those things. Obvious elements build mental momentum and initiate creativity and intensity. The best way to create a road to the complex is to build on the fundamentals. Six, put the right people in the right place. It's critical that you include your team as part of your strategic thinking. Before you can implement your plan, you must make sure that you have the right people in place. Even the best strategic thinking won't help if you don't take into account the people part of the equation. Look what happens if you miscalculate. Wrong person. Problems instead of potential. Wrong place. Frustration instead of fulfillment. Wrong plan. Grief instead of growth. Everything comes together, however, 
when you put together all three elements, the right person, the right place, and the right plan. Seven, keep repeating the process. My friend Olin Hendricks remarked, strategic thinking is like showering. You have to keep doing it. If you expect to solve any major problem once, you're in for disappointment. Little things such as filing or shopping systematically can be won easily through systems and personal discipline. But major issues need major strategic thinking time. What Thane Yost said is really true. The will to win is worthless if you do not have the will to prepare. If you want to be an effective strategic thinker, then you need to become a continuous strategic thinker. As I was working on this chapter, I came across an article in my local paper on the celebration of the Jewish Passover and how millions of American Jews read the order of service for their Seder, or Passover meal, from a small booklet produced by Maxwell House Coffee. For more than 70 years, the coffee company has produced the booklet, called a Haggadah, and during those years, it has distributed more than 40 million copies of it. I remember using them all my life, said Regina Witt, who is in her 50s. So does her mother, who is almost 90. It's our tradition. I think it would be very strange not to use them. So how did Maxwell House come to supply the booklets? It was the result of strategic thinking. Eighty years ago, marketing man Joseph Jacobs advised that the company could sell coffee during Passover if the product were certified kosher by a rabbi. Since 1923, Maxwell House Coffee has been certified kosher for Passover. And then Jacobs suggested that if they gave away the Haggadah booklets, they could increase sales. They've been creating the booklets and selling coffee during Passover ever since. That's what can happen when you unleash the power of strategic thinking. Thinking question. Am I implementing strategic plans that give me direction for today and increase my potential for tomorrow?